Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Clampett's interested in deep sea fishing, don't you agree? Chief, it is a master stroke of psychological strategy. Thanks. Grab the tail. It cleverly takes cognizance of their innate love of the sport of hunting, which has been drastically curtailed by Ellie May's love of the very creatures they hunt. Yeah, grab the tail. Provides these active, rugged mountaineers with all the thrills and excitement of the chase they so thoroughly enjoy. Yeah, grab the tail. Yeah. And if they become devotees, it will prevent their leaving Beverly Hills and returning to their home. For, by its very nature, big game fishing is impossible in their landlocked mountainous terrain. I repeat, Chief. It is a master stroke of psychological strategy. <laughs> All this because I said three lousy words. Don't you agree? <laughs> well, I'm going to say three more. Grab the tail! <laughs> <laughs> Granny, me and old Duke here is plum tuckered out. We walked clean over to the golf pasture looking for some game. <laughs> What'd you get? We got mean mouth and stick chased out of there. You mean you come home with nothing empty handed again? Well, we did manage to find a few of them golf eggs. <laughs> Throw them out, Jed. They just can't be cooked. I boiled them and torched them and fried them. <laughs> and they still come out gummy as an old boot. <laughs> oh, bunglers, I wanted some fresh game meat. Well, looks like we's caught betwixt and between, Granny. Folks don't want me shooting a gun, and when I snare the game, Ellie makes a pet out of it. Uncle Jed, Granny! Come see what Mr. Drysdale and Miss Jane brought us. A great big old fish about this long. Fish that size must be a channel cat. Yeah, some catfish rolled in cornmeal, deep fried. Oh, it tastes pretty good right now, honey. Huh? Sure. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Remember, not a word to my wife about giving this trophy to the Clampets. Right, Chief. That fishing trip to the Gulf of Mexico cost us about $4,000. And this is all we have to show for it. I understand. Plus which, it took her six hours to land it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> doggies, that is a big fish. Ain't no catfish. Looks like a carp. No, no, this is a tarpon. That's a saltwater fish. Oh, you cook them in salt water, do you? <laughs> no, no, it lives in salt water. The tarpon is a noted deep sea game fish. And I want you to have it for your game room. Our what room? Game room. That's the one with the trophies on the wall. The billiard room. Oh, you mean the fancy eating room. <laughs> I guess as you so quaintly call it. What do I have to do to him? Nothing. It's been prepared by an expert taxidermist. Feels nice and crisp. I'd sure like to see the skillet he was fried in. <laughs> Me too. Appears like the grease got too hot and he curled up a mic. No, 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 he's not fried. Baked? No, no, no. Don't smell like he's been smoked. <laughs> Tarpon are rarely cooked at all. Once caught, they're usually preserved, like this one. Oh, preserved. Like pickled? <laughs> well, yes, in a way. It's quite a process. They're cleaned, scraped, treated with chemicals, even the bones are removed. Then, a form is made and the skin Miss is... Hathaway. <laughs> Sorry, Chief. Mr. Clampett, I'm sure you'd enjoy catching a fish like this. I would, for a fact. Now, there's a critter even Ellie wouldn't make a pet out of. <laughs> then it's all settled. Now, I'm going out and get you the finest deep-sea fishing equipment that money can buy. Oh, no need to do that, Mr. Drysdale. I can cut myself a pole and make a hook out of a bent nail. No, <laughs> catching big game fish like tarpon and marlin requires very special equipment. It does indeed, Mr. Clampett. 
black marlin, for example, which is a native of our own Pacific waters. Jethro, <laughs> fetch this fish out to the kitchen. I gotta figure out how to cook them. But, Granny, Miss Jane said you didn't have to do nothing more to it. She said that it was I all... heard what she said. But I say that this fish ain't got a fresh-caught look to it. Nobody's chomping on him till I've cooked him. Yes, <laughs> ma'am, Granny. Right, it could use some tender enough. That's it, Skipper. Not too fast now. Little Arnie will fall off the wagon. If so Arnie goes around one more time, it'll be your time, Elmer. Skipper, I told you not to speak. Little Arnie will think you done that on a purpose. Now, you show him you're sorry and how much you like him. <laughs> That's nice. See, Arnie? Skipper didn't mean it. Hey, mate. Oh, howdy, Paul. What you got? That's a present for Mr. Drysdale. That's their, what you call, a uh, fishing machine. <laughs> That's for catching them big saltwater fish. Oh, I don't think Granny's going to want no more of them. She's up yonder now, wrestling with that one Mr. Drysdale give us. <laughs> you going to commence a tendering up, you wall-eyed ocean-going varmint? Are you cooking that fish? I ain't giving him a bath. Gene said he already been prepared by experts, something or other. Uh... Taxi driver. That sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> he better stick to driving taxis. He don't know shucks about fish. I've been boiling this rascal for two hours. And he's still tough as harness leather. You know what it could be, Granny? What? Swimming around in the salt water all them years is what toughened him up. You know what Brian will do to any kind of hide. I know what it's done to his hide. Why, I've dull three knives trying to cut him up. I finally had Jethro fetch him out here and throw him into my big kettle hole. And cooking him two hours ain't softening him up none? Not one smidgen. And I've had both ends in the water. <laughs> Granny, we's hungry. Ain't that fish ready yet? That fish ain't never gonna be ready. Well, let's go catch one of our own. Yeah, with this fish winding machine. It'll be a fresh water fish if I cook it. I'd as leave try to stew an alligator as that thing. Come on, Jethro, let's dig some worms. Now, hold on. I reckon it hurt Mr. Drysdale's feelings considerable if he was to find out we didn't eat his fish. But, Uncle Jed, I pretty near broke a tooth on that thing. And if Jethro can't bite through it, nobody can. <laughs> How about Rusty, my cat? He's had his eye on it ever since Jethro fetched it out here. Yeah, let's give it to him. It's a heap of fish for one cat. Don't worry about that, Granny. Appears like Rusty is rounding him up some friends to help. <laughs> All I can say to you is, loads of luck. <laughs>
<laughs> Maybe it'd be better when spring thaw sets in. Come on, let's go find us a crick or a pond. Hey, wait a minute. I got a bite. My doggies, he has a dad. Gilly, fetch my pole, quick. What fur? This ain't nothing but a boot. I know it. I'm going to fish for the other one. They ain't better than the ones I'm wearing. <laughs> Wait here. Granny and me is going in and talk to Mr. Drydale. Yeah, I have a few things to say that you might oughtn't to hear. Him and his Beverly Hills fishing. Now, simmer down, Granny. We'll get it straightened out. Keep eye on the poles and stuff. Money is no object, Captain. Mr. Drysdale is bringing the Clarford family, and he wants to charter the finest fishing boat in your fleet. Oh. Eight o'clock? Pier two... Sea witch. Right. Oh, I mean, I am. <laughs> Guess what, Chief? What? You're taking the sea witch tomorrow. I am not. You know she doesn't get along with the clappers. <laughs> the sea witch is the boat you've chartered. Oh, well, don't scare me like that. <laughs> My doggies, we come here to complain about having no place to fish. You ought to see where poor Mr. Drydale is trying his luck. Granny, <laughs> Mr. Clapper, come in, come in. Mr. Drysdale, are you catching anything out of there? Well, I, I wasn't really trying to catch anything. <laughs> We was trying. What did you get? One old boot, and it don't fit too good. I thought the hunting around here was poor, but the fishing is really miserable. We found a pond with some fish in it up the street yonder. The one with the spring and the bubbles coming out of in the middle. Oh, that's the municipal fountain, and those are goldfish. I hope you didn't try to catch any of those. Oh, yeah, we caught a lot of them, but we threw them all back. The biggest one was no better than that. <laughs> Mr. Clavitt, Granny, tomorrow you will have the fishing experience of your lives. I have chartered a boat. I ain't setting foot on no boat. Granny, you'll be perfectly safe. It's quite large, and there's an expert crew aboard. I ain't getting on no boat. But you love it, Granny. Wait till you experience the thrill of hooking a giant barracuda. I ain't going. A fighting sea bass. I ain't going. Bonita, albacore. I ain't going. Yellowtail. You can call me coward all you want. I ain't going. <laughs> Please, Mr. Clappin, bring her back. I want to explain to her. I'll bring her back, but you're going to have a job getting her on the boat. Granny's right fond of fishing, but she likes to do a rocking on dry land. <laughs> Doggone it. Deep sea game fishing is made to order for that scrappy little woman. Yes. One look at a 500 pound sea bass and she'll never fish in fresh water again. Chief, I've got an idea, an inspiration. It combines all the elements Oh, of wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you tell me in 5,000 words or less? <laughs> I can tell you in one word, marine land. Marine land, yes. Yes, there, with her feet firmly planted on dry land. Granny can gaze through glass windows into a huge tank and observe at arm's length specimens of sea life of the world, from the largest mammals to the tiniest crustaceans. Now, Granny, it won't hurt you none to listen to Mr. Drydale. He ain't getting me out on no water. But, Granny, I know how fond you are of fish. I'm fond of ducks, too. But I ain't going up in the sky after him. <laughs> sit down, sit down. We're going fishing after all. Mr. Drysdale told us about a fishing hole that's got them all beat. He's going to take us out there first thing in the morning. It's a gymnasium. You can look through a glass window and pick out the kind of fish you like. Some of them as big as this truck. <whistles> Woo! Well, let's go right now. Yeah, I'm all for that, Jed. Well, I reckon it would spare Mr. Drysdale a heap of trouble. Yeah, where is it, Paul? Down near the ocean, a place called Marine Land. Do you reckon the Marines would let us fish there? Well, uh, he didn't say nothing about that. Well, they hadn't better try to stop me. I'm catching one of them whoppers for supper tonight. The yeah, Marines is real tough fighters, Granny. And they tote guns. Well, let's stop by home and get our guns. Now, hold on, Granny. We ain't taking on the whole United States Marines. And he called me a yellow tail. Oh, fight them, Granny. Ain't nobody gonna fight nobody. We'll ask them Marines nice and polite, can we fish in a fishing hole? 
What if they say no? We'll jump that quick when we come to it. Drive on, just roll. <laughs> Pacific Ocean. Well, doggy, that is a big rascal. You can't even see the other side. <laughs> and right out there, 3,000 miles is the whole wine island. <laughs> My doggy, you got good eyes, boy. I could see it if it weren't so hazy. <laughs> Look, it, Paul. Up here is a big sign that says Marine Land. Yeah, we're pretty near there. Now, let me do the talking, Granny. I don't want you scrapping with a Marine. All right, Jim. But they hadn't better give us no trouble. I got my heart set on fish tonight. Excuse me there, young fella. Are you a Marine? No, sir, Air Force. But there's a Marine. Oh, Sergeant. Yes, Lieutenant. These people seem to be looking for a Marine. <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you? Well, we heard stories about all the big fish there is in there, and we sure would like to try our luck. Be my guest. Oh, well, thank you. Well, it's a great spot. You'll love it. Big fish, huh? I'll say. If you like real big fish, be sure to catch the whale. <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> There's all kind of fishing holes here. I don't see any no fishing signs. They better not be. <laughs> sure is nice of the Marines to let us use their fishing holes. Yeah. Hey, this looks like a good one. Pull up here, Jethro. They must be them whales that Marine told us to catch. I've got to admit, them's big fish. <laughs> I don't think we got a pole big enough to pull one of them rascals in. <laughs> According to the sign on the fishing hole, then there's four pusses. I want me a whale. I want. <laughs> Son says these here is seals. Well, let's see what else we can find. I want me a whale. <laughs> I like them, especially that baby one. Come on, Ellie. <laughs> It's a dandy. Is this where the whales are supposed to be? That's what the sign says. I don't see no fish. Maybe you gotta drop a line and get a bite. Put a hook on my line, Jethro. Yes, I'm good. Ellie me, I'm gonna catch me the biggest whale there is in there. Fish me out a nice big fat worm. Yes, <laughs> I don't believe I'd bother with a worm if I was you. Think a grasshopper would make better bait? Not unless you can find one the size of a hog. Grasshopper don't come that big. And you better use a hog. Look out yonder. <laughs> Him with Granny? Big Jeff 
dice roll. You ain't gonna put me on no hook. No, no. You go out there on that board and make a noise like a grasshopper. You mean rub my legs together? I don't know how you do it, but do it. Then when he jumps out of the water to grab you, you grab him first. How? Throw your arms around him. Grab him out of there and fling him on the bank. <laughs> Granny, I reckon you're getting a little carried away. I'd be proud as you to take that big rascal home, but instead of gaining a fish, we might be losing the boy. If the Marines can catch him that big, so can we. Come on, Jethro. <laughs> Ellie, we're in for trouble. That muley little woman is bound and determined to have that fish. Ain't he too big to catch, Pa? Granny will have a go at it, and big as he is, when she's done with him, he'll know he's been fished for. <laughs> go on, Jethro, go on. All right, but you come with me. <laughs> What's the matter, Jethro? You scared of a fish? Well, well, well that's what I am. <laughs> There's a whole bucket of fish. Why don't we take these home? Then we don't have to bother that big, ugly rascal. Give him one. He'll think we're friendly. Catch him off guard. Go on, Jethro. Go on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean you're ugly. That's right, Jethro. Came to me again. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Looking down his throat is like looking through a cellar door. <laughs> All right, Granny, that's enough. Come on, Jethro, get off of here. You bring the fish, Uncle Jed. Granny too much of Leif Crick. <laughs> Ain't that right, Granny? Where'd you go, Granny? It's row! Put me down, you big coward! I caught her, Uncle Jet. She was putting her back to the whale tank. I reckon we better head for home. a whale, Granny. It's too much fish for a little woman like you. That fish don't live that's too much for me. I'll see him in my skillet and it's the last thing I ever do. Just get close to him, so that'll be the last thing you ever do and I'll settle down. <laughs> Set her off. Poor Granny. Yeah, the sad part of it is, when she goes to telling folks about the one that got away, ain't nobody gonna believe her. Hey, Uncle Jed, look what I found on the truck. A baby seal. That's my baby seal. You put him down. Kelly Mae Clampett, did you carry off that critter from Marine Land? No, sir, he followed me. Followed you? Yeah, you just put him down and I'll show you. <laughs> May. I reckon he followed you to the truck, but he didn't get up by himself. No, sir. I helped him a little. We're helping again because we're taking him back. Come on, Whiskers. Hey, 
Hey, Granny, we's going back to Maureen Land. <laughs> Don't get her steamed up again. There ain't no way in the world that little woman can catch that big... Let's go. I'm ready for that big rascal this time. <laughs> Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.